Good morning and happy Tuesday. Uh, it's Wendy Johnstone here with Family Caregivers of British Columbia. Um, really happy to be here on this Tuesday morning to talk about mind-body connection for, for caregivers. I'm going to be completely transparent. I thought the Facebook Live was next week and so I just got back from my morning walk and I haven't had time to shower or be as prepared as I'd like to be. Um, but the good news is, is that uh, I've been connecting with quite a number of caregivers around this topic of late and uh, we, we had recently uh, written an Inspire Senior Living uh, on this very topic. So it's still uh, top of mind and um, on a very you know personal level, even just trying to maintain that mind-body connection for myself in everyday living. Uh, is uh, is something that um, I try to continue, you know, remind myself of. Uh, actually, the staff at uh, Family Caregivers of BC, uh, we're also doing a movement challenge again to sort of try and uh, keep ourselves uh, in the present around mind-body connection, uh, especially as we're we're having to uh, sit more at our desks and we seem to have less time uh, for you know physical breaks and not having to see, um, uh, you know, socially outside of of work. Uh, so this whole idea of um, being connected to our physical selves, uh, regardless of whether we're caregiving, is, is really critical. So one of the things that, that we often hear in our uh, interactions with family caregivers is that uh, caregivers often know what they need to do for themselves, and they often just find it really difficult to maybe play, you know, to press pause on the caregiving video playing in their head uh, and so they can't always find you know respite right now too um, so they can't always leave the person that they're caring for at home and so it can really lead uh, to caregivers uh, to actually stop caring for themselves not because they don't want to they want to care for themselves it can be really hard to find energy um, to do that you know I was I was connecting with um, a caregiver you know quite recently uh, who is going through a particular transition with the person they're caring for uh, it's you know the illness has you know progressed to a certain point and now they're faced with having to make some really difficult decisions they're having to increase um, support they're having to make changes to how they're caring and and for them in particular you know maybe up until that point things were going quite well with you know staying physically uh, active, whether it was just going out for a walk every day, whether it was, you know, doing uh, an online video. But through this particular transition, uh, it's gone out the window, so to speak, because they feel like all of their energy and attention has to go through this particular transition. And so sometimes, you know, with that, there comes more physical and more psychological uh, stressors. And even though that person is really, that caregiver is really looking forward to um, changing the care plan and getting them more support in place, it sort of can create the significant amount of stress. And so what we do know, what this research shows us, is that too much stress can really negatively affect our, um, our physical and, and psychological health. And so often we might be experiencing more anxiety. We might have that feeling of like, oh, a lot more overwhelmed. That's often something that we physically that we can physically hear on the phone. As caregivers, often you know have that big sigh, that big, oh, it's just so much to do. I feel overwhelmed. Uh, my heart starts to race. You know, so there's some real uh, noticeable changes in the body for family caregivers uh, when they're experiencing uh, a lot of stress, and that over time can really uh, impact or have an impact on overall well-being. So. Lately, you know, I've noticed that this whole idea of mind-body connections are, are gaining a lot more traction uh, in being, in some ways, they're being packaged, uh, you know, right or wrong, sometimes being packaged uh, in, in small blocks of time as a very sort of effective way to improve overall well-being for family caregivers. So activities such as this idea of, you know, walking meditation or walking outdoors, um, in increasing this idea of mindfulness uh, around um, just paying attention to how our body is um, reacting or how, how we're feeling on that day. Um, activities like yoga, they're, they're often this significant way that family caregivers can change their relationship um, 
with particular stressors, even, even when those stressors can't be changed. And so I'm gonna come back to the case that I had, uh, this conversation I had with this family caregiver the other day. And we were talking about how actually the, the situation in her home uh, and the person that she's you know caring for, she can't actually change that. Uh, and even more so with COVID. And so those stressors aren't going to change. And so one of the things we talked about was we talked about this idea, well, how do we, um, how do we find a little bit of time or space to help ourselves physically uh, and, and to nurture that mind-body connection? Um, and one of the great things that I've certainly, you know, noticed, uh, even, for, even for myself, um, doing, having to do a little more online uh, programming, especially, for example, um, you know, I've been trying to do a little more online yoga just for myself. Um, I've set the bar pretty low and I, I do two online yoga videos per week and if I can do 20 minutes it's a win and one of the things that I'm noticing a bit more is that as I'm paying attention to what the instructor is telling me throughout the yoga practice I'm really understanding this idea of like how important my breath is for example and so occasionally not every day but occasionally I'll find myself uh, saying, you know, repeating what the instructor said. And so what I'm learning online or, you know, through this sort of trying to have this consistent practice of two times a week is that I'm starting to take that information and try to apply it to my everyday life. And so the idea that these mind-body activities can often stretch beyond our, our caregiving role, uh, they can pop into our mind, uh, you know, throughout the day, um, it's a real positive aspect. Uh, and so one of the things that caregivers often feel um, after, for example, taking our journal uh, workshop, watching Kate's um, mindful, you know, monthly mindful practice is that they're more in part to use them every day. Because what, what we realize is that maybe uh, it doesn't have to be 20 minutes. Sometimes, you know, it's being able to take what we've learned from a journaling class, from an online yoga or reading, you know, a mindful practice, um, you know, article to just be able to apply it in a very small, uh, tangible amount to our day. And that it's having an impact on how we're able to manage some of those ongoing stressors. So this idea of how do we take those little bits and apply them to our everyday life? Uh, that's been, I think, something new that's been coming out into uh, the literature and into, I think, more around general practices that we don't have to do it every single day. The benefits are, are likely greater if we do it every single day, but even if, if we're able to commit to uh, one or two times a week and we find five minutes, it's still going to have a positive impact on our ability to manage uh, some of the stressors that that come with caregiving and, and other parts of our life. So we've talked about uh, three main things. So there's mindfulness, there's this idea of this walking, outdoor walking meditation, and then there's this idea of yoga. We're just gonna you know, focus on those three. There's plenty of other, um, there's plenty of other mind-body connections that uh, one can partake in. We're gonna focus on that three. So mindfulness, and we've got some, I know we've got some resources listed below. Mindfulness is this awareness that we gain through paying attention to thoughts and emotions in the present moment with no judgment. Uh, and I'm just actually just going to give you an example that happened this morning. And I, I was actually speaking to a friend about this the other day, about how uh, we were actually wondering now that we have more awareness around how the language we use with ourselves, is it going to impact the way, for example, we, uh, you know, parents parent or how we speak to, uh, you know, people we're caring for. Um, so anyway, this morning I realized, oh my goodness, I got my weeks mixed up. And the first thing I said was, Wendy, you dummy, what is wrong with you? And, and then I, and then I stopped and I thought, well, okay, that like, a, don't be that, yeah, stuff happens. Um, not a great situation, but you know, you know this stuff and you're not gonna be as prepared and you're not, your hair's not done, but oh well. 
uh, that's life. And, um, you know, beating myself up wasn't going to help me, uh, you know, get onto Facebook Live and give uh, my, my greatest uh, performance. It may not be my best, uh, but it's certainly not going to be the worst. Uh, but, but speaking to myself that way isn't going, you know, wasn't going to help me. So I thought, wow, mindfulness. That's maybe something I wouldn't have done uh, two years ago. And so while, you know, while it's slow, and while the initial reaction was not to be very kind to myself, uh, I did catch myself right away and, and you know, turn it around in terms of you know, more supportive language. Um, so I think that's like a really important uh, you know, piece of mindfulness uh, is even just understanding the language that we're using with ourselves. And uh, when, because often when things go well, you know, we pay, we pay less attention because things are going well. When things become stressful or we're feeling like we're falling short, that's when the negative language starts. And I think that's not particularly helpful for us in whatever role we have, um, especially with caregiving. Um, you know, caregivers are really doing the best they can under uh, extenuating circumstances right now. And so showing ourselves that self-compassion is really important. Um, and, and this idea of of just bringing awareness to our thoughts and emotions is often a really good starting place. Um, I listen to Tim Ferriss quite regularly. I do love Tim, Tim Ferriss's uh, podcast. Um, and he uh, brought on um, this really great author uh, called Dan Harris, who has this book called Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. Um, and the thing about this particular, you know, book that I that I've I like is that it's very pragmatic for individuals that a, are a bit skeptical about meditation, uh, but also very uh, pragmatic about how you can just um, how you can just use it in your day on a very practical level, even if it's just for a minute. Um, so that's one good resource. We have some other great resources uh, at Family Caregivers of BC. And if you've come across uh, a resource that you have found helpful, please share it in the comments below. Um, we're always looking for uh, we're always looking for ideas or other strategies that have worked for others. Um, we're, it, it's a wonderful part of the sharing community. So I think I had mentioned uh, you know yoga and and there could be other aspects, whether it's you know tai chi or qigong. There's a whole um, the practice of activities that you know allow us to to focus on breath and and they bring together both the physical and the mental components to try and achieve this movement of the body in a and a more peaceful mind and that's certainly something that I on a very personal level um, have noticed you know just for someone um, there's a lot going on there's a lot of moving parts um, and while I'm not, you know, a caregiver right now to a relative, um, I do do some private caregiving work. And uh, in particular right now, we have um, a client that's going through a big transition. And there's a lot of risk where that person's living right now. Um, we're trying to, you know, increase supports. And so I find it a very stressful situation because there's only so much I can do. And the family is long distance. And uh, I'm aware of the risk. And so, you know, I can carry that with me. And in particular, last week when there was, you know, some challenges, I, you know, I was doing one of my yoga practices. And what I found was happening was, you know, my mind was just going back to this particular situation. And it was really hard for me to kind of be in that moment. Um, and then towards the end of the practice, finally, you know, it was only 20 minutes, but finally towards about 15 minutes, I was just able to, you know, let some things go. And at the end of the practice, I felt so much better. I just felt so much, you know, grounded and so much more sort of at peace to understand that, um, you know, I wasn't able to really control that particular environment. We were doing the best that we could, um, you know, for that, for that person and that you know we were working towards solutions and that really for me to focus on my own stress levels and decreasing um, my stress around it was only going to help everybody but the first 50 minutes of that practice you know i kept going back to it was really hard to break that uh those thoughts um, and i think that is something again that's really helpful around uh, whether it's meditation whether it's being outdoors and not you know talking to anybody 
uh, it can really be helpful in bringing awareness uh, and bringing a bit more of a peaceful mind. So there's lots of really great uh, online yoga practices. I know some people use books um, and there's a lot of great Canadian content out there as well. So um, again, if you have any particular resources that you, uh, that you have found helpful, uh, I certainly um, encourage you to, to post those and share them with, with others. Uh, one of the other great activities that uh, for individuals that I think are particularly a bit more active and that have the opportunity to leave their home is this idea of walking meditation. And uh, I don't know about you, but living in BC, we often have access to a lot of forested and, and, and nature activities. And we know, you know, the research basically says that spending time in nature can really help decrease our stress levels. Um, and that, you know, those, those gains can be, uh, can happen with little as 10 minutes. So this walking meditation really is for individuals that love to be outdoors and we're a bit more active. Um, and it's designed to bring our body and mind in sync with walking. And so it's, you know, we're not talking to anybody. It's really about just staying aware of the physical experience of, of uh, the walking experience. And often it's, it's uh, thinking about our steps or, you know, and if our mind wanders, we simply bring it back to each step. Sort of like counting sheep at night, except the hope is not to fall asleep while we're walking, but just to bring our attention back to our, uh, our walking. So, it, it, or it's similar to sort of noticing your breath uh, when you're in a mindfulness practice or doing yoga and allows our thoughts, you know, your thoughts are going to pop up. But when the thought pops up, then, you know, the idea is that you go back to focusing on your breath. Uh, there are various walking meditation apps um, out there. Uh, on a very personal level, it's one of my favorite ways um, to do a bit more med meditation uh, is going out into the you know the forest right behind my home. It's about a 15 minute loop. It's not very long, uh, and I just count my steps. And if a thought comes in, I just go back to zero and I start again. Um, and it's actually nice. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just I'm just aware of the you know the sounds. I'm just thinking of my steps. And at the end of it, I often you know feel like my mind is a bit more at peace. Um, you know with with. Uh, the day or even just having a break from what's going on in my day has been you know incredibly helpful so these are just all uh, starting points there are many other ways to reduce stress and offer an opportunity to improve wellness we really wanted to bring attention to the idea of you know something that could be done uh, close to home could be done in a short period of time just raising awareness you know we understand uh, how challenging you know, it's what we hear from family caregivers is putting themselves first. Uh, it's not that they don't want to do it. It's, it's a sometimes having permission. It's uh, maybe looking at a very tangible, um, you know, small goal to work towards, even if it was doing, you know, sort of, you know, one 10 minute, you know, um, walk a week or, you know, even starting that small is going to have a benefit to us. Uh, caregiving and even uh, you know in when we're balancing caregiving with other aspects or even if you're watching you're not a caregiver but you're you know wanting to support a caregiver uh, the whole mind-body connection is I think really really critical um, you know for us especially right now uh, even more so now uh, in in COVID times so thank you for your patience with me this morning and for me uh, in my sort of frazzled appearance at the start um, I'm so happy to, to be here and sharing with you and thank you very much for your lovely comments. Um, I appreciate, appreciate all of you too. I hope you have a wonderful week and uh, it's sunny outside. It's always a really helpful um, a part of our day, isn't it, when the sun's shining. So have a great week and uh, I'll see you in March for our next book, uh, our next Facebook Live on the right day. Bye.